I'm Shuli Chang. I'm presenting Who is Zero in the festival. Who is Zero is a cypherpunk sci-fi movie. It's about sex, drugs, virus, and conspiracy. Surrender yourself, zero, no contact, no food, nothing, to see, move, along now, move, move, now. Hundreds of zero genera arrested in the cities. The government urges Zero Gen to come forward and admit themselves to the ICU, Intensive Care Unit for Sexual Reassignment. Welcome, Shuli Zhang, yes. the director of Fluido. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Your film has started many years ago, I read, yes. as an art installation. Can you tell me something about the art installation, what you started first? Uh, actually, it did start as a film scenario. Mm -hmm. And the time I finished my last film called IKU, I was showing my film at, uh, Zent uh, at Copenhagen uh, International Festival. And at that time, I went to meet with uh, Lars von Trios and his studio, uh, Zentropa. And at the time, in 2000, they have a division called Pussy Power, so they invite me to, <laughs> uh, to work out the scenario and to film there. So I made this uh, fluid uh, concept for them and uh, with a kind of 10-page scenario, but uh, somehow the film never got made. Uh, they went, the, the particular division got closed. Uh, uh, so I kind of had this concept and scenario and didn't know where to go. I got switched to another producer, a Danish producer also didn't get made. So um, by that time I was like thinking, oh, maybe it's not a bad concept that I should do something, you know, even I cannot make it a film. So I started making kind of performance installation with it, uh, which include, I, I make a casting as a performance, you know, because the film actually has so many uh, characters, male, female, trans, and uh, so I say, I made this kind of casting call in the museum as a performance, and uh, and over the years I tried to do that several times, and uh, I also encountered certain censorship, and I got shut down three times. You got oh yes where? Uh, one time was actually in Berlin at Wolfsburg. <laughs> 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 one time in Montreal. And uh, another time in Norway, in Christiansen, Norway. So I got, I really got shut down three times for wanting to make the performance of this concert. I was thinking about, like, when your, your film is shot in Berlin and, like, based in Berlin, you have, like, mainly, like, Berlin-based artists or, like, yeah. actors that yeah. are acting. And I thought, like, definitely, I mean, it reflects somehow like that it's like Berlin as a city. I thought like what's in the film? I mean, it's set like in 2016. Set uh, 60. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, what kind of aspects of Berlin nowadays do we find back in the film and uh, in the future? Yeah. In the story of like Fluido. Uh, when I decided to shoot in Berlin, uh, basically uh, with my producer, who I convinced that he should work with me and we should make this <laughs> film together, Jorgen Bruni, mm -hmm. uh, who I also know for some time, but we never got to collaborate this way. So I said, well, that's, uh, you know, I know it's difficult. And he said, oh, you're too expensive. You know, I can't work with you. And, you know, I said, well, I'm willing to make it really low budget. So we decided to do it, and then of course it had to be shot in Berlin using a lot of producers' resources. And uh, I think for Berlin, for me, it's more about like try, try to, for me, to imagine a kind of future scenario in Berlin, you know, because before I always think about Denmark, snow, you know, ice, and now in Berlin. Um, 
one thing is, first thing I want to do is try to avoid graffiti, which is not very easy in Berlin. <laughs> uh, second, I kind of go, instead I kind of went underground. So I thought, you know, the bunkers, these kind of even some of the station, Metro train station, station yeah. they, it's just like they are built forever, you know, they are built for the future, <laughs> you know. They really think they will be there, they will be there, you know, it doesn't matter that that's the future for me for in Berlin, you know. So, um, so that was decided and I was really looking for this kind of set and, you know, if you look at a lot of, you know, for example, we shot at an ICC building mm -hmm. and you see these lights, you know, totally like kind of 60s futurism, you know. Absolutely. Exactly, you know, so in a way... It fitted I, to the yes, story. Yeah, I call, so sort of after all this and then with the costume design, because we are so low budget, so we always have to kind of recycle a lot of old clothes. So I was like, oh God, maybe I'm doing a film about kind of vintage future, you know. <laughs> It's about a story about like the eighth, uh, the HIV or the HIV virus, <laughs> and the good news is that it mutated, so it's like not, it's like not so bad anymore. It's like we overcame it. Like it's like right. Well, it is not so bad anymore, but it's about the yes, it's about the mutated AIDS virus. I think. It's a reminder that, of course, the, you know, the A is still around. And I think if you look at a lot of websites like, you know, UNESCO, or, you know, kind of say, oh, by 2030, we should not have any more AIDS, you know. But it's more like it's some sort of thing that people want to kind of say, oh, it's gone away, it's just gone away. So in a way, uh, the film, by making the AIDS virus mutated and setting in the future, in a way, it's, it's a reminder of you know this uh, uh, crisis epidemic is all still there, staying with us. People still you know suffering from it. But yeah, actually, you criticize the governments like not only one, like many, of course, of all of them, like we just mentioned, United Nations, because you have like found in footage from the 80s, I mm. guess, or like even like beginning of the 90s, yeah. when there have been like protest marches in. I guess New York, right? Yeah. Um, so people were on street and fighting for like lower drug prices, that these drugs get a like affordable for like people, like, yeah. especially in America, it has been an issue. So, right. what was your idea to, to fit this footage into the film? Um, in a certain way, yes, because I think um, the the AIDS virus and the t at the crisis, the epidemic. At the time, in the 80s, you know, I was in New York at the time, I was also on the street. I think particularly at the time, we feel the government has kind of associated with pharmaceutical industry and is controlling the whole market of the drug, you know, by not releasing the drug. You know, I think there's been many stories like uh, certain drugs didn't get released in America, people had to go to Mexico to buy these drugs or, you know, for whatever safety reason or different way but then it means people cannot access to the drugs you know so that's a for me it's a, a bit of the conspiracy there uh, and so the film kind of want to uh, recall this history so in the film uh, when AIDS virus got mutated it became also a drug a drug that can get you High, high than high sensation. The white powder. <laughs> exactly, it replaced the white powder. The white fluid replaced the white powder. So imagine again a drug, you know. So then you have the drug, the drug that is uh, being chased by the drug law, by the government would like to uh, not to recognize this drug because then it means that the AIDS crisis didn't go, go away. The pharmaceutical want to get hold of this drug because they think they can make something out of it too. So there's a kind of, you know, three party trying to play with these drugs. It's interesting. I mean, in this footage from the 80s or 90s from New York, there's like um, you quote like some American opinions, and some said like 50 percent of Americans want like HIV positive people to get tattooed. Yes. And you just like pick it up and bring it into your movie, like what's like in 2060 again, right? I mean, mm -hmm. but now they are tattooed for a different reason. 
It is actually these are from the from the real real uh, statistics uh, that that uh, the people want to have a uh, quarantined, tattooed, mm -hmm. yes, marginalized, marginalized and like rejected. Yes. yes. So in the movie, I use a lot of tattoo to call the uh, to catch these zero gen people to get tattoo to kind of get a you know I call it sexual reassignment. Um, so that's yeah. You have, I mean, I can imagine that there's a lot of explicit, explicit material in the film. What's mm -hmm. like really interesting because like it's not only like male or like female uh, genitals. Mm -hmm. So you just really like mix it very well. So I had the idea that mm -hmm. I just like not only see like vaginas but also dicks. Yeah. What was like important for you to show the? like explicit material. Yes, um, I'm glad you, you are able to talk about this. <laughs> we are able to talk about this. Um, for me, yes, I want to, I want to stare at the body part. Mm -hmm. uh, I call body part or uh, private part. Um, I really want to expose it. I think the film is filled with a, a very uh, expressive uh, body part mm -hmm. um, and then because when, when we are talking about dealing with uh, body fluid and uh, wow <laughs> there's male ejaculation female there's ejaculation a lot the, going on. <laughs> there's uh, pixing you know so but then so each uh, each uh, fluid uh, output is kind of being put into different use but I think it's all somehow mm -hmm. meaningful in the film, it's not um, just trying to say, oh, these are like, you know, I want to show that, but I think, you know, I think like for a long time, people don't understand the female ejaculation, for example. Oh, you know. There was no discussion about, no, yeah, no, no it yeah, didn't exist. Exactly. And uh, I think maybe for, by the, for this film, I think the female ejaculation is still will be quite a taboo for many people, more than male ejaculation, I guess. Um, we'll have to see when the film get premiere. But uh, for me, again, you know, like how I think maybe coming from my own sort of more like upbringing, you know, like able to deal with this and able to look at these for it uh, ejaculation, <laughs> that it is a liberation for me. Yeah. So and then another thing with the AIDS crisis is is more about like we cannot. You know, we, we are not, we cannot do any fluid exchange, right? Body fluid is uh, taboo in a way. So at the end of the film, when we say announce, like liberate the fluid, you know, so in a certain way that the, and then how the pissing become a coding, become hacking, all this is about, uh, it's really a lot about the liberation, you know, and for myself in particular, I think the outpour on the fluid represent to me a certain form of liberation. And in a way it becomes a kind of fetish as well, right? I mean, it's getting a drug, so what you just can put on your skin and that what's, that's quite interesting, yeah, I yeah, see. Yeah. I mean, I imagine like that it must be, have, have it been very hard on set, like for you as a director, but also for the actors, I mean, to expose themselves. When I uh, decided, you know, with the organ, we say we'll make the film here, of course, I start exploring the performance in the city. And uh, it's quite amazing because, uh, you know, basically it is, uh, the city has cultivated such an environment for a lot of queer performance. Mm -hmm. There's actually many, many venues uh, to showcase their work. And so I, I kind of quite got involved with many performance. Of course, for the casting, uh, we did a lot of different casting. We even do a kind of public casting. We, again, we did like kind of casting as a performance, like 2014. We did a casting association with the Transmediale Festival in... Oh. Yes, we did that. Oh, and wow. uh, and, and uh, it, it became like a public. We just like interview the actors, you know, like interview the performers coming for the audition. And then the public was around. Uh, looking at the process of So you got right away the idea if somebody is a fit for a character or not? Or? Yeah, I think 
the problem with a lot of these uh, performers and queer performers and also the porn performance, you know, the performance acted in porn, is because uh, I think they all quite used to uh, the certain kind of role that they play. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, as far as the porn is like, okay, I just have to get to the sex, you know. So, in a way, for my movie, it's more about like exploring these actors' performance, actresses, but trying to 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 sort of against a stereotype of their usual behavior. So we did a lot of uh, trying to make their character very different, you know. So that that is a so for them it's like a, also a challenge, a process to challenge themselves, you know, to have to speak a few lines, you know, some of them. <laughs> So you are screening the film on, on the 14, 15, and 16. Okay. So I want to like thank you. Oh, great! And um, good luck for the Teddy Awards. Thank and you. Good luck for the screening. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Just shake hands. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>